60 Minutes executive producer Jeff Fager is here. Jeff, when someone like a legend like Morley passes, we do what we call in the industry an obit, an obituary, mm -hmm. highlighting his life. You actually ran an incredible hour on 60 Minutes looking back at his life. Was he able to see him? Yes, we, we ran that on Sunday. We've been working on it for about three months, and uh, some of us, Warren Lustig, who is the editor, producer, has been working on it for about a year. Mm. Uh, he did see it, mm. and he loved it. And he really, um, he was uh, failing physically, but his mind was there mm. always till the end. So I spoke with him right after the tribute. It was based on his retirement. We decided to run a tribute, and we knew that he was in trouble. So he saw it, he loved it. He was so appreciative. In typical Morley fashion, he said uh, that he was so grateful that for everything we've done for him. But I told him, Morley, we can't do enough for you of considering all that you've done for us. And he has done so much. I mean, his, his life at 60 Minutes, his life at CBS News had such an impact on all of us and how we cover stories and the kind of stories he covered and, and the most incredible body of work. 46 years at 60 Minutes, yeah. he cut his teeth on the battlefields of Vietnam. Yes. How did war change him? Well, I think that uh, his war experience uh, was probably the most powerful war reporting that had been uh, done since World War II, and in a way, Murrow, which was uh, which was important to him. He uh, it changed him because he, you know, they tried to get him fired. The White House tried to get him fired. He reported on uh, this village of Cam Nee, where he was with the soldiers who had gone out to light the huts of the villagers on fire. And they captured that on film. And it really had a major impact on, on public opinion in the United States about that war. So uh, the White House was infuriated. And uh, the president asked if he was a communist. And the answer was no, but he's Canadian. <laughs> and the president said, uh, as, we, as we've heard, I knew there was something wrong with him. <laughs> but so. he really was a remarkable, how remarkable war reporter, how was he able to shape public opinion? What was it about his reporting? Well, I think that particular event that he captured and the way he told it, uh, his power of observation was unmatched, mm. uh, really in the best traditions of CBS News. Uh, in some of his peers, like Charles Corral, you know, there were only a handful of people in our storied history who could tell a story as well as Morley. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that had impact because of what they captured and yeah. raised questions about what are we doing in this war. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it, it, it really did affect him because it catapulted him. Mm -hmm. He became a bigger figure because of it, but it was a hard time to get through. When I watch his pieces, there's something so real, yeah. so authentic, and so humbling. It doesn't matter if he's interviewing a superstar from Hollywood or a villager on the ground. What was it about him? Yeah, so he's an inspiration, I think, to all of us who are in this business for a number of reasons. And one of them is his humility. He never carried himself as if he was important. He was a reporter. And he was never really comfortable with the on-camera part of that. Um, which I think was, uh, is a bit hard to see because he, he was so good on camera and he, I think, carved such a unique uh, image. And, but it was real. And I think that came across. Uh, he never, there was, you know, he never held back. Uh, he, there wasn't a phony bone in his body. And it all came out in his reporting. And when he would be out on, on a story, the people that he would meet, uh, he got them to talk. Mm -hmm. He was likable. So he was a complete reporter. He really was. And uh, I think just so much humility. And I think the, the inspiration that will continue is that he elevated every story. He knew how to uh, make a story better and he worked so hard on how he was going to tell it. And I think that's what I always say to people around CBS News. You know, look at a Morley story. Look at several of them get better by watching what he did. If you had to distill the things that Morley did right mm -hmm. in good storytelling, mm -hmm. what would it be? Well, I think the power of his observations really stand out. Uh, he could bring a, a, a moment uh, into his words and his language that helped you better understand it. And I just, you know, part of our uh, tradition is about uh, good writing that uh, 
is really spare and you know not filled with flowery language yet, and not a lot of adjectives, descriptive, uh, and never underestimating the audience, but never sort of expecting that they know as much about a story as, as you might, having worked it. So he's really a model. I think he'll always be a model. Uh, I think part of it is that he could turn a phrase and come up with a, with a line that is memorable and was memorable. And uh, it just, I think his uniqueness, there's nobody like Morley Safer. What is it about Morley Safer? Morley Safer. He has gone everywhere. In fact, he traveled an incredible road throughout the field. What really got his eyes to sparkle? Was there a particular topic that he was interested in? We loved Italy. You know, he, he did, uh, he loved everything. I mean, I, you know, I traveled with him. I, I worked with him as a producer on his team 25 years ago. And uh, he, loved, he loved reporting stories. So he had a twinkle about every story he was on. That was what made him so special. The enthusiasm that he brought with him. Uh, he never took it for granted. He always thought of himself as a lucky man. I get to go out in the world and cover all these great stories and get paid to do it. You know, that, that to him was special. But if you put him in Italy, you know, um, or France, but even more Italy, he, um, he loved it there. And uh, some of his best stories, I think. Italy, huh? Yes. Mm. Well, when you look at his life and the stories that he's done, was there one topic or one story that really stood out in his career? Yeah, so there were 900 plus at CBS, at 60 Minutes wow, alone. 900? Yeah. Uh, David Browning uh, calculated that if you binge watched Morley's <laughs> stories and you watched for eight hours a day, it would take a month to see them all. A month? Yeah. Wow. So it's pretty hard to pick. I mean, the special that we aired this past uh, Sunday was a difficult exercise. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's a curse of riches. There's so much good material, <laughs> you have to know what to leave out, and that's yeah. not always easy to, to, to decide. Um, we were talking about it this morning because this Sunday we want to run one of our favorite stories that illustrates Morley at his best. And it's a story about the Antonori family, yes, Italy, uh, <laughs> that has been making wine for six centuries. Uh -huh. And he had so much fun with it. And it's just a delightful story. Look forward to seeing that. I have to tell you, though, Jeff, of all the things, remarkable storyteller, humility, authenticity. But I got to say, Morley Safer also knew how to rock an ascot. He yes. had style. He clearly <laughs> he had some British roots in him, didn't he? Yes, he did. He did. He, uh, by the way, he was an Anglophile. He loved the UK, but he was a real Canadian. Uh -huh. And he loved his country. Uh, he had. Even his name had that, as Kevin Tedesco said in his obituary today. Uh, you know, a certain panache. You mm -hmm. know, he, he he had real style. He never had his. Uh, he never wore his sport coat without his pocket square. I love know. that. And uh, it's a very classy mm -hmm. character, so classy, and so much fun at the same time. And one of the things that I don't think a lot of people know about, but um, Morley and I teamed up and did a lot of practical jokes together, and the people that were the uh, that were the butt of that practical joke, whichever we were pulling, um, will remember them well, because we worked hard on them. But Morley loved that. He loved practical jokes. He loved, um, he loved laughing. And you see it in almost every story. You've got a huge void that will never be filled over at 60 no. Minutes. What are you no. going to miss the most about him? I think the storytelling. I mean, that's, um, I will often think when we have a story that we want to assign to somebody, that's a Morley story. Mm. Uh, that's perfect for Morley. It's, uh, it's hard to find people that write as well. Uh, and I think every reporter that's up there would say the same thing. You know, we're blessed with Steve Croft because he can write so beautifully as well. Mm -hmm. But we lost Bob Simon. You know, these are um, impossible people to replace. Uh, we filled the job, but we don't replace the person. Uh, so true. And so, uh, but I do think of it as, as a dear friend that he was also as the inspiration that he will still be to make us all better as we think about how good he was. Jeff Fager, executive producer of 60 Minutes. Jeff, thank you so much. Thanks.